Darth Vader is one of the most feared Imperial officials that the Empire will ever dispatch to any given situation, and Vader's involvement is a direct indication of the severity of any respective problem, as well as the direct hand of the Emperor at play. Vader is rarely ever involved in matters that aren't timely and imminent, yet despite his tenure, he is never addressed by any particularly indicative Imperial rank. Within the Empire's military structure, Vader is only ever used as a field executioner, but he is never explicitly called by a term that indicates where he falls in their ranks, and Vader is seldom shown to have any political control over the decisions that aren't specifically battle-centric. So where does Darth Vader rank in the Empire? Who is subservient to him, and how much political influence does he actually have on day-to-day -day operations? What was Darth Vader's rank in the Empire? Well today, acolytes of the galaxy and students of the Force, let's discuss Vader's exact role in the Empire, and the amount of political influence that he truly had over day-to-day -day operations. First though, if you work within the ranks of the Empire, and want to be sure to never insult Lord Vader, be sure to blast that subscribe button, and be sure that you'd never Never insult Lord Vader by knowing everything that you can about him. Now my friends, let us continue. Within the Imperial structure itself, Vader doesn't actually have an official rank or placement within the Imperials, and he has often been vaguely referred to as a Supreme Commander, which is often applied to battlefield scenarios. What is unique about Vader, however, is that he can shift between ranks at the behest of the Emperor, as he only ever answers to Palpatine, and Palpatine can shift Vader wherever he pleases within the Empire at a moment's notice. Meaning that in some scenarios, Vader does actually have to take orders from others. He made dispatch Vader to follow the command of one of his lieutenants, or he can offer Vader to lead any given battalion at any time, meaning that Vader's rank is perpetually ambiguous and for very good reason. This aforementioned ambiguity was actually an issue that Vader himself brought up to the Emperor in his first months as a Sith Lord, as the Imperial officers did not know that he existed or how to regard him, let alone address how much authority he really had over them. They didn't know if they had command over him, or if they were forced to obey him, or that he ever existed in the first place. During this time, before Vader's reputation, the ones that did know of him largely viewed him as Palpatine's lapdog, who served as an executioner, but didn't directly influence any day-to-day -day operations or influence of the direction of the Empire in the progression it was going in. While the officers had full control over political decisions and strategic maneuvers in order to strengthen their hold on the galaxy, Vader was far more combat-centric than any of this, and all of this, frankly, bored Darth Vader. When confronted regarding this issue, Palpatine responded by stating to the officers that Vader's word is synonymous with that of the Emperor, and anyone in the Empire should obey Vader as they would obey him. As Darth Vader displayed his notoriety by killing multiple officers in order to garner respect through that of fear. Vader's first introduction to the Empire, he killed multiple officers at random. On many occasions, the Emperor instructs Vader to obey commands of various Imperial officers though, including perhaps most dominantly that of Grand Moff Tarkin, whose relationship with Vader is among the most complex and intriguing of any relationship in all of Star Wars. The reason for this is, they each only answer to the Emperor yet neither of them answer to the other, unless expressly stated by Palpatine himself. On various projects, they fluctuate regarding who is in charge fairly regularly, which has oftentimes led to friction between the two Imperial leaders. While Vader often doesn't care to dictate day-to-day -day operations, he and Tarkin exist in separate divisions of the Empire that are equally ranked, but cannot influence the other. When one crosses over another's realm of expertise, however, authority shifts, and they have since learned how to coexist and operate as a relatively effective unit rather than continuing to clash. Nonetheless, during the first few years of the Empire, it could be stated that the two of them hated each other. While Tarkin is a political leader who influenced the direction of the Empire, Vader is a battlefield-centric commander who takes control in various combat scenarios, and these two units exist separately but work together fairly regularly. During the construction of the first Death Star, for example, Tarkin was placed in charge of overseeing the project and for this reason, he was granted authority over Vader in any matters pertaining to the Death Star. As we see in Rogue One, as well as A New Hope, when Vader takes orders from him. This meant that when any decision had to be made, as it pertained to the construction and operation of the Death Star, Grand Moff Tarkin had the final say, and was the only one cleared to make the ultimate decision. Vader obeyed Tarkin in these circumstances. However, Vader had full authority over anything related to battlefield combat or tactics. Anytime the Empire had to lay siege to a planet, 
onto rogue Jedi, or face down a battalion of rebels. Vader was the unrefuted general in combat. This meant that they needed one another, and they each had their own respective strengths that helped to further the ultimate goals of Palpatine and his empire. Since they fluctuated rapidly between who was in charge, they learned to respect one another since they knew that the other would obtain control sooner or later, and they understood the ramifications of holding grudges in such a volatile situation. But what about other members of the Empire? Did other members of the Empire ever have control over Darth Vader in the Imperial hierarchy? The answer is yes but they only had the authority to command Vader if he was given the explicit instruction by the Emperor himself. As a general understanding, however, Imperial officers respected Vader as they would have the Emperor, and they largely believed their voices to be one and the same. If Vader spoke, so too did Palpatine. After Vader's first few months, his reputation began to gain more traction, and he became the formidable force of nature that we know him as today. An interesting note about Vader's rank, however, is during the beginning of his tenure as a Sith Lord, many Imperial officers outright would insult Lord Vader and refuse to follow his command, not knowing, of course, about his grand reputation. However, by the era of A New Hope, all the Imperial officers served Lord Vader over fear of death, as they knew that if they disobeyed him or failed him, Vader would instantly not hesitate to execute them on the spot. In the beginning, though, Vader had to go through numerous Imperial officials that insulted him before his message was fully seen by the Grand Empire. So to answer the question, Vader has one equal in the ranks of the Empire in Grand Moff Tarkin, and one that he truly serves, being the Emperor himself in Palpatine. With Vader's official rank in the Empire constantly fluctuating between second and third in command over its entirety, However, he had very little command and say over the political side of the Empire, which is debatably equally as important as its combat side. But anyway, acolytes and students of the Force, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the only two individuals that Vader ever took orders from, and his official placement and rank in the Empire? And as always, my friends, may the Force be with you, and I hope that you have a great day.